This is a quick overview of the Mac version of Particle Illusion for After Effects. And when you launch the installer, it's a simple installer. You really only need to do one thing, and that's choose the drive where, the, uh, where your applications are installed. Once the install finishes, the folder that contains the documentation for uh, Particle Illusion will open. Uh, go ahead and open that documentation. Jump to page 4 and open the link for the additional emitter libraries installer. You'll want to use this installer unless you already have all the other uh, emitter libraries from, let's say, a Particle Illusion 3 install. Activation is required after installing, and it's pretty straightforward, so check the documentation for details of activation. Got some footage in After Effects. I want to apply Particle Illusion to it. From the Effect menu, select Wonder Touch Particle Illusion. As the text in the Effect Control window shows, you need to click below. Now, in Particle Illusion, there's no such thing as a blank or an empty emitter. You always start with a preset. So this is the Emitter Selection dialog. It shows every time you apply. And if you're not familiar with Particle Illusion 3, on the left side here is the library window. It shows the currently loaded library and all the emitters in it. The one that shows initially is the default library. And the default library is a sampler library that shows just a wide variety of different types of effects. Um, so you can choose an effect from here, or if you want to load a different library, click the Load New Library button, and then you can select the uh, library that you want uh, manually. An easier way, instead of doing it that way, is to go ahead and do a search. So in this case, um, let's say I want to search for smoke emitters. I can click uh, to type smoke and then search. And since this is the first time I'm searching, it's going ahead and building the index. It's creating a, an in, a searchable index of the emitters that are on my system. Um, that only happens the first time I search or whenever I click the build index button. But um, So that doesn't happen every time. And uh, I should point out that the search is done by um, emitter name only. So this is going to return a search of all of the emitters that have the word smoke in, in them. So uh, once this is done, you can see my results. Um, got about 126 emitters that have uh, smoke in the name, uh, all different types, and I can select them that way. If I wanted to search for all the emitters on my system, I can go ahead and do an empty search. So take out the keyword, switch it to an OR search, click search, and that'll return every emitter that's on my system. And right, right now in this system, I've got about 1,900 emitters available. So for this project, though, I already know which emitter I want to use. Um, it's in the latest library, and it's the uh, fireworks glitter emitter. That's kind of the, exactly what I'm looking for. So click OK and that's loaded into my project and there is the emitter that we want and if you take a look at the parameters here uh, spin it open and you can see that uh, this effect is made up of four different parts we've got four different particle types down here rings body fog stars etc those are named in the emitter uh, that was created in particle illusion 3 so um, we're just going to look at the f one part of it right now so we're going to spin open one of them uh, let's spin the uh, Let's spin the stars open. So if you look at the parameter list, you can see that uh, life, number, size, velocity, etc. at the top level all have uh, percentages. There are scaling factors that apply to all the emitters below it. So all the, excuse me, all the particle types below it. So if we look at, uh, go down and look at stars, you see the same type of, of parameters, life, number, size, etc. But they don't have percentages. They're just straight numbers. Um, so those are the base properties. So in this case, let's say we want to look at the, the stars. Um, uh, if we adjust the size of the stars um, at the lower level here, you can see that it, the stars all get larger. The stars particles all get larger. Um, if instead I undo that and let's go ahead and increase the size at the at emitter level, at the topmost level, uh, once I do that, you can see that not only do the do the stars get larger, but every other component gets larger as well. So uh, that, that kind of shows you the difference between the, the upper level and the lower level. I think it's, it's fairly intuitive, but just wanted to point that out. And it, let me undo that. And then if we look back uh, at, at the lower level here, uh, one thing about the, at the particle type level, you can see that um, besides the basic parameters, life, number, size, etc., there's, there's um, variation versions of those. So uh, size variation, for instance. And we use those to go ahead and make particles different sizes. So if, if on the stars, if I set the size variation to zero, all the, all the particles that come out will be the same size. Um, 
they don't look the same size right now if you look at them because they're they're actually growing over their life but they all will ev eventually be the same size if we want them to be uh, much more um, widely differ in size then we go ahead and crank up size variation and you can see that some of them are, real, are much larger than other ones so um, that's what the variation properties do uh, um, let's go ahead now and look at a more complex uh, emitter now we've got a super emitter in our project and a super emitter is different in that it is an emitter that creates other emitters and those emitters create particles whereas a regular emitter is an emitter that creates particles directly so if we spin open the parameter list here uh, you can see the top level looks exactly the same as a regular emitter, so uh, not much difference there. But if we spin, keep spinning things open, uh, you can see that uh, the particle type level down here is the same as before, but we've got an intermediate level here, which is the free emitter level, or the free emitter type level. And that controls the free emitters, which are the invisible emitters that are created by the super emitter, and the free emitters then create the particles. So a um, little example might might be a little more helpful here. So if we look all the way down at the at the uh, particle type level again. Uh, let's look at velocity. So if I increase the velocity here, uh, you can see that the particles are spreading out more. Um, so this, this level affects the particles directly uh, just as it did before. So I'm going to set that to zero. You can see that the particles don't move. They're, they're, when they're created, they just stay where they were. If we go up one level and look at the um, F velocity, which the F stands for free emitter, so if we adjust the free emitter velocity, I'm going to reduce that a little bit, you can see that as I adjust that, the free emitters are not moving nearly as much. The particles themselves don't change, they are exactly the same as they were because we didn't adjust the, the particle type level, we adjusted the free emitter level, so I'd like to just take a quick look at a more complex super emitter just to give you an idea of the, the parameter list that, could, that you could see for that. So we're going to go ahead and remove particle illusion from this level uh, layer. We'll go ahead and add there's the original emitter that we had before. There's actually a super emitter version of that same emitter in that library, so I'm going to load that one and then jump ahead in time a bit so we can see what's going on. And, um, as you can see, visually it's much more complex, and in the parameter list it's much more complex as well. So we've got our free emitter level, and now we have uh, each of our uh, particle type levels there as well. So if we spin everything open, you can see that there's probably, um, you know, 70 uh, parameters or more and, and with even more complex emitters you can have uh, over 100 or maybe even closer to 200 parameters uh, which is a little daunting if you first think about it but if uh, when you look at it a little more closely uh, they're all just uh, repetitions of each other at different levels so uh, really not that large a number of parameters that you need to be familiar with uh, but gives you an incredible amount of control and lets you do a lot of uh, really uh, cool things with it. With this emitter, I had to jump forward in time uh, in order to get far enough so that particles would have been created and we could see what's going on. But what if uh, I wanted particles to uh, be created right away so that this emitter doesn't take time to ramp up? Um, in particle illusion, a lot of the emitters have uh, what we call a, a preload value, where the emitter will have X number of frames that it's already been generating before it turns on. So at, right away at the beginning, uh, it's got uh, some particles generated. Uh, this emitter does not have that, and you don't have access to that uh, preload value from within After Effects. So um, there is an easy way to go ahead and, and let that happen, though. What we're going to do is um, go ahead and take Particle Illusion off of this layer. So I'm going to cut that uh, to the clipboard and then I'm going to create a new layer, uh, create an adjustment layer. Oops. And on that adjustment layer we're going to paste the particle illusion on it. So you don't really see any difference now, we still have to jump forward in time to see the particles, um, but what we can do now that it's a separate layer is you can take the layer and slide it to the left and um, that'll get our emitter going ahead of time uh, so the particles are visible when we want them to be. So let's go ahead and customize this a little bit, this emitter. Oh, first thing you might want to do is you might want to remove a particle type. Uh, so this has got four components, the rings and the body and the stars and things that we've already looked at. Um, so you want to get rid of the stars, you'd say, okay, I'll go ahead and set the visibility down to zero, and that'll get rid of them. And that's true that we'll get rid of them. Uh, visually, they're not there, but uh, computationally, they're still there. So the best thing to do is not uh, get rid of the vis not turn down the visibility to zero, but instead uh, change the number down to zero so that it doesn't create any of those at all. So that's a brief overview of the Mac version of Particle Illusion for After Effects. Thanks for watching.